So, my sister commented that a lot of my videos here on YouTube consist of me mocking someone dim-witted. She says I'm really just going for the low-hanging fruit. Well, I reflected upon this criticism and I thought, you know what? I need to up my game. So, today what I'm going to do is I am going to defend a creationist. Not only am I going to defend a creationist, I am going to defend him against the attacks of not just an atheist, but a philosophical genius. Might be a little tougher than usual. I might fail. So I'm trying to make a quick summary video of the debate that I had with uh, Creation Liberty last night. Um, it's really hard because it's 48 minutes long, but I'll do my best. So. For about the first 12 minutes, we argue about the definition of certainty. We move on uh, without me wanting to, and him using his definition while I use mine, leading to problems in communication and leading him to just use his definition, and anytime I didn't use it, he was saying, well, you're just guessing. So, I guess that was a big help. Uh, 12 minutes to do nothing. Well, lovely. Uh, evidently, he believes that using the dictionary and popular usage of a, of a word is better than uh, the Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy when talking about a philosophical issue. Well, now, I'm just a simple monocular turnip farmer and not a philosophical genius, but I recall hearing something about Socrates discussing philosophical issues with the common people, and I don't think that he had to refer to any great works of philosophy or agreed upon philosophical rules. I believe it was said that the real genius of his philosophical discussions was how he was able to draw in the common person and speak their language, you know, take these large philosophical issues and dissect them into small pieces that could fit into the palm of the hand. Now, interpersonal communication with another, another person is a lot like performing with an audience that provides immediate feedback and is also performing themselves. But part of any performing is understanding who your audience is, understanding their level of understanding, and then catering your message so that it can be easily filtered through their perspective, so that they can give you feedback. Now, if you have the greater knowledge of philosophy, well, you, and you know that he doesn't have that knowledge of philosophy, well, then it behooves you, sir, to tailor your message to his level of understanding. You can't expect him to go and read your highfalutin book on philosophy and become an edumacated uh, philosophical scholar such as yourself. You can only expect him to take the knowledge that he has and make the best that, that he can with it. So really, uh, what's the word I'm looking for here? Uh, you're being a bit of a pretentious douchebag? Okay, forgive the insult, I am a turnip farmer. You know, fun fact, turnips are carnivorous. That's how I lost this eye. I don't know why. Oh, and when I brought up that it was the Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy and I was going by that because I found it to be better than a dictionary, he said, uh, argument from authority, which it's not. Because he doesn't know what an argument from authority is. He doesn't know what an argument from, uh, popular, from popularity is. He doesn't know what a logical fallacy is. He doesn't know anything about uh, philosophy. All he's doing is copying Eric Hoven point for point. Well, whether he knows what an argument from authority is or not, he does have a very good point. Namely, if you, the two of you have the option of using dictionary definitions, which everyone is familiar with, or your highfalutin fancy schmancy philosophical definitions, which you are familiar with and which he is not, and considering that it doesn't matter what you say words mean as long as you're consistent and as long as you agree on them, then it is only logical that the two of you use the dictionary definitions and then you formulate your arguments using those word meanings. As the philosophical genius, the burden to do that is wholly upon you because he doesn't know the fancy schmancy philosophical meanings of the words. So, I mean, well, be like Socrates, man. But, you know, if you want to watch that, watch me deal with that kind of crap, you can go ahead and watch the video for yourself down below in the blowjob bar. Anyway, we move on from that and he starts asking about my brain, whether or not my brain is reliable, whether or not my brain is 100% reliable. Because, according to him, if it's not 100% reliable, then it's completely unreliable and you're just guessing and everyone's just guessing and blah, 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 blah. To which I said, no, it's not 100% reliable, but it's also not guessing. And I have ways to verify my information with other people. And he said, well, you're, so you're using your unreliable brain and you're comparing it with other people's unreliable brains because, you know, he doesn't care to acknowledge that he's possibly wrong on the idea that not 100% doesn't equal zero. 
Well, to be fair, given that your verifications of your own brain functions are themselves dependent upon your brain functions, you can't say with any degree of certainty that your brain's reliability is greater than zero. It very well could be precisely zero. I mean, I think you even go on with your th I think therefore I am argument. The only thing you can really be sure of is that you exist. Absolutely anything else and that you know or think you know could be wrong because the very methods you use to check to see if they're wrong require your brain, which could be quite unreliable. So, I mean, you, you can't really say for sure that it's above zero. Anyway, he also asked me whether or not I was certain of God's existence. I said, not uh, absolutely certain, but I find his existence to be very much implausible. He said, what's your statistics on that? I said, it's not a statistical thing, it's a logical thing. And he just started, and he kept asking me to say, to put a number on it. I said, I can't because that's not what I'm talking about. And he said, well, yeah, you are and we moved on from there. Uh, I, I, I actually explained to him why I didn't, why I felt that God's existence was uh, implausible three times. And he kept asking me, well, how can you say that his existence is implausible? And he kept asking me that question. Like, I was just going to say, it just is, or something. I throw out my hands and go, I can't answer that question. I don't know. I don't know what he was expecting. Oh, perhaps he was expecting you to give an answer that he thought was satisfactory and wasn't absolutely dripping and saturated with pretentiousness. I don't know. I guess I could go watch this whole debate, but I mean, uh, I probably wouldn't understand it. So, you know, way over my head. Um, evidently, not someone who at least has some sort of education in philosophy. So, he then went on to mock me for the idea that my brain is not completely reliable, therefore it's unreliable. Um, so, I laid out my current epistemology. It was really rough. Uh, but he didn't actually, like, because he's not skilled in philosophy, he didn't deal with any of the real problems with what I laid out. He just dealt with the stupid shit. Um, like, I started off with, I think, therefore I am. And he said, well, in order to do that, you're using circular reasoning. That's a fallacy. You're using your brain first. You are starting from the fact that your brain exists. And an atheist can't admit to this, just like you're not going to admit to this. And I said, well, yeah, you're right. I'm not going to admit to this because I'm fucking not. <laughs> that doesn't strike you as a bit petty or childish. I mean... Your brain does exist, you may as well admit it. I called him a liar at some point, and he said that I need to justify that with some sort of, uh, with proof or evidence or something. And I went ahead and told him, I can say that you are lying about my point when you say exactly what I didn't say. And he kept telling me, well, I, we've got this recorded, we've got this recorded, and you admit it. And you admit it, and we can go back and watch the video. You know? Now, I'm just an illiterate high school dropout turnip farmer, so correct me if I'm wrong here but I believe that you are committing the fallacy of fact inference confusion. See, you say, you said that I said this when in fact I did not say this. Okay, let's assume that you're right and you said something and he's saying that you said something totally different. Well, let's just call that a fact. The inference you draw from this is that he's lying. Now again, I'm just using my plebeian dictionary definitions, but I do believe that a lie is an intentional deception, where, in this case, he could just be misremembering, or perhaps he is also doing the fact inference confusion thing, and he heard something you said, made an inference, and then restated that as if it were the fact. In, in those cases, oh, in those cases, he wouldn't be lying. And his willingness to go back over the tape would generally support the conclusion that he doesn't believe he's lying, in which case, he's not lying. But hey, I mean, why the hell do I know? I'm still going to side with him, though. But let's actually go over the fact that we actually uh, recorded this, because I'm perfectly okay with the video, as it is. You know why? Because you come off looking like a philosophically inept buffoon. There are worse things to look like, you know. In fact, my favorite part of the video was when I finally got to answer the first of my questions, though I didn't get to get to the rest because he sort of hung up on me, which, admittedly, kind of my fault because it's hard to hear him when I'm talking, and uh, that presents a bit of a problem and it seems like I'm cutting him off a lot, so he just hangs up on me. But he never actually answers my question. Well, he does, but he doesn't accept, but he goes back on the answer that he gave. My question, very simply, why does God exist instead of not exist? His answer at first was, well, why ask that question? Why ask that question? Your brain's unreliable, so you can't make an assessment from asking you that question. Don't worry, Creation Liberty. I got this one. Well, you see, Mr. Lundy, God is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. All of existence looping around on itself like some sort of Mobius strip, right? To ask 
why God exists is a bit like asking what's north of the North Pole? What's colder than absolute zero? It makes no sense because God is the very source of all of the answers and so questions aren't even really applicable to him because he's pure answer. The beginning and the end. Why does not apply? I don't care. Why does God exist instead of not exist? I kept asking that, and he goes, well, God's always existed. To which wasn't an answer to my question. I said, no, not when, why? <laughs> and he goes, ask God. And I said, so you don't know? And he goes, no, I don't know. I don't claim to know myself stuff like that. And I said, okay, there you go. That's all I wanted. That's all I wanted was a straight answer. And I tried to move on. And he goes, no, 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 no. You, can, no. you can't just move on from that. You can't just make a straight jab. That's not how we play here. And he started, and he just started, like, from there on, for about 10 minutes until he hungs up and he hangs up on me, he just starts making up shit to try and paint the question to be what it isn't. Instead of actually addressing the question, he wanted to reformulate the question to be something that he could answer. So here's this guy making the very best of his mental faculties, right? So he's trying to put things into a framework that allows him to approach them from an angle that he's, you know, better able to tackle, but you won't let him. Basically, Mr. Lundy, you're just a giant bully. Yeah, straight up. Because not having an answer to a question to him was just, he couldn't handle it. He just couldn't take it. You can't handle the truth! So he had to reformulate the question. He had to say, your question's bad. We have to call it something different. So that I can say that God exists because he loves us. And that was literally what he answered. After he hung up on me, he said, this is the answer to your question. God exists, and he came to uh, the, the world in the form of Jesus Christ to die for our sins and save us because he loves us. That's why. And I'm like, really? You actually think that answers the question? How convenient that all of this took place where it couldn't be recorded. Now far be it for me to call you a liar, but... I don't believe you. Well, this has been fun. You know, all you uh, Christians, creationists, whatever, don't say I, I never did anything for you. I, you're welcome, Creation Liberty. Have a nice day.